YouTube Frogs, Sumeru and 3.0 are finally here. With the new region comes a new background for my character videos, and that also means new characters. In this video, I'm really excited to provide my first impressions of Tignari at C0, breaking down how his kit works, how I'd build him to start, and how his gameplay feels. More in-depth details will be coming in a dedicated weapon comparisons video and a complete guide later in the week. Let's dive right into it. First things first with our lovely Forest Watcher. He is one of two Dendro playable characters released in Genshin. I'm not going to deep dive into Dendro reactions in this video, just know that this reveals some new compositions that I found to be quite enjoyable with him. Quicken Comp and Burning Comp. Quicken is similar to Melt Vaporize but for Dendro and Electro, and Burning is Pyro plus Dendro and it's burning. So for Tignari's base kit design, imagine him as a Dendro version of Ganyu but more single target focused as his charge shot and burst damage are homing missiles that don't deal AoE damage. His damage also comes in many small numbers rather than a large single hit. This comes to benefit his compositions by ensuring high application and reapplication of Dendro. First up, normal in charge attack. Half of Tignari's practical damage output lies in his charge shot. Similar to Ganyu, Tignari's charge shot has a charge level 2 called Wreath Arrow. This wreath arrow first deals single target dendro damage and then splits into four homing cluster bloom arrows that also deal single target damage. The wreath arrow does not have to hit an enemy to split, so even if you happen to miss your first shot, as long as it hits something in the background, the four cluster blooms will still spawn and track enemies down. At level 6, I find the damage to be sustainable. 122.1% wreath shot damage, then 54% per homing arrow, coming to a total of 338.1%. Notice that the homing arrows account for about 60% of this charge shot damage. Now, the charge time of the level 2 reshot is quite long to be used arbitrarily. It's at about 2.5 seconds. This is where Tignari's elemental skill comes in. Tignari throws a dendro bomb looking thing in front of him, hunting enemies for 8 seconds and granting himself his Vijnana suffusion effect, Apologies for pronunciation, reducing the charge time of his next three wreath arrows by 2.4 seconds. It's near instant, at like a 0.1 second charge time, but it's not an instant quick scope like Ganyu C6. So you do need to hold left click for a fraction of a second to proc it. This effect lasts for 12 seconds or three wreath arrows and has a 12 second cooldown. It also generates three to four dendro orbs, which is average for a 12 second cooldown ability and considering his burst cost. That leads us to his elemental burst, Fashioner's Tanglevine Shaft. Ignari fires six homing missiles that track nearby enemies, dealing single target damage, and after they hit, they summon six more secondary homing missiles that also track enemies. The first wave is actually weaker at 77.9% per, while the second wave is stronger at 95.2% per. This is at level 6. This total comes down to 1038.6%. On a 12 second cooldown and only 40 energy costs, Tignari's burst is relatively cheap and low effort to use. Comparatively, 3 wreath arrows from his elemental skill effect deals 338.1% times 3 which is about 1014.3%. It's pretty equivalent to his burst output and they both do a crap ton of hits. They are also both on a 12 second rotation that you notice here, making them effortless to combine for his playstyle. However, due to energy restraints, usually his burst won't be on that exact 12 second uptime, making his elemental skill triple wreath arrow a greater portion of his practical damage output because you can use it whenever 12 seconds is ready. Now, all this multiplier talk, but how does he actually scale? So this is where his passive talents come in. Ascension 1, Keen Sight. After he fires a wreath arrow, he gains plus 50 elemental mastery for 4 seconds. So this is usually procced during his very first wreath arrow shot in his elemental skill 3 proc chain. Ascension 4, Scholarly Blade. So Tignari's charge shot and burst damage scale with elemental mastery. So this translates to 100 elemental mastery is a 6% bonus. This is capped out at 1000 EM, which grants him 60% damage bonus. So this damage bonus is equivalent to a Dendro damage bonus goblet. So for comparison's sake, 777 elemental mastery would provide that goblet's worth of damage bonus at 46.6%. So his skill multipliers are all standard attack based. His passive talents provide elemental mastery synergy, and the spread and aggravate reactions scale into crit. So basically, Tignari is your standard attack crit scaling Dendro single target DPS with bonus elemental mastery synergy, extremely similar to Ganyu. Talent priority should be no surprise. Normal charge attack, greater than equal to elemental burst, greater than the elemental skill. His elemental skill serves no purpose other than enabling his triple charge shot, so it can honestly be left at level 1. Normal charge attack and elemental burst are both responsible for heavy amounts of damage, with normal charge attack squeaking out just slightly since its uptime does not require energy. I level both to at least level 8. So, that's a breakdown of what to expect from his kit. 
A grand overview at Constellation Zero describes him as a straightforward single target Dendro DPS, with damage splits mainly from his charge shot and secondarily his burst. Let's go over my preliminary recommendations for weapons and artifacts. So when it comes to weapons, his roster is very similar to Ganyu's. His stats show a straightforward focus of attack, crit rate crit damage, dendro damage, charge shot slash burst damage, and elemental mastery for that quicken boost. And for optional extra credit, sprinkle in a light amount of energy recharge to optimize his 40 cost burst, and he'll be comfortable in his 12 second rotation. I would say 120% or 3 substats worth to start. Let's first take a glimpse at his signature Hunter's Path, and what makes it specifically his strongest weapon amidst a bunch of powerful DPS bows. Has an insane crit rate secondary stat, slightly lower base attack, 12% elemental damage bonus, and a Yunjin slash Shenhe style passive based on its elemental mastery for 12 charge attacks. Essentially, this means the bow provides additional damage modifiers based on 160% of its elemental mastery, which then scales into his crit damage, charge shot damage, and dendro damage bonus. The stats are very similar to Jade Cutter, with lower base attack but compensating for up to 44 crit rate at level 90. This makes an instant crit damage circlet build for a good stable ratio. Its passive is specifically made for Tignari's Cluster Bloom arrows on his charge shot. Post E activation would usually enable 15 small hits within a short sequence, which is 3 charge shot worth, maximizing the usage of this bow which buffs 12 charge shot attacks. Synergy of Elemental Mastery with this bow and the rest of his kit means that build path surrounding this bow prioritizes Elemental Mastery over attack. Now, with this weapon being particularly niche for charge shot users, I know a lot of you guys wouldn't want to pull for something that won't be used for anyone else. Thankfully, Tignari is quite flexible with any of the DPS bows that we currently have. For the rest of the 5 stars, the following are all great choices. Aqua Simulacra. This is Yelan's signature, with great universal value, high crit damage, but requires decently close range playstyle. This is his second strongest option, being within 10% damage of Hunter's Path. Polar Star. This provides crit rate, burst damage, and a crap ton of attack percent. Pretty easy to 4 stack, just normal attack at the beginning of his rotation, and you'll be able to do a charge stack, elemental skill, and elemental burst. Thundering Pulse. This is strong just for its crit damage and attack stat stick with the passive being literally useless. Skyward Harp, it's also strong just for the crit rate and crit damage stat stick. Amos Bell, strong attack percent stat stick and good synergy with travel time with his Cluster Bloom arrows. Stronger with more high quality artifacts to provide the crit rate crit damage that this bow won't provide. Four star weapons. Again, a bunch of excellent choices that are within 5-10% to strength of each other. In this selection, we have more dedicated elemental mastery weapons which introduce a more variety of options. We have the Windbloom Ode and the Stringless, which are both elemental mastery secondary stat weapons with synergistic passives. Windbloom Ode grants attack percent after using elemental skill, which is perfect for Tignari's rotation. And then Stringless provides universal burst damage but no benefit to charge shot. King Squire. This is the upcoming craftable Sumeru Bull option and it's reliable safe F2P option with a caveat of its passive being on a 20 second rotation. This is longer than Tignari's usual 12 second rotation, so half the time you'll only be getting the attack percent and none of the elemental mastery bonus and also this extra damage. We also have Hamayumi and Prototype Crescent, the other two craftable bows, which are also great F2P options for Tignari. Prototype Crescent is stronger, but it does have a manual passive proc. Hamayumi is weaker, but it's more autopilot with its passive. Then we have other less available options. Aldi Hunter R5, it's strong if you're doing a swap based Tignari playstyle where he's off field more often. Then we have Viridescent Hunt, which is battle pass locked, but it's a good crit rate stat stick and a relatively decent passive. One weapon I would not recommend is Black Lift Bow. This is due to the passive requiring kills before even activating. And lastly, the three star weapons. We have Slingshot, which is a great crit rate stat stick, but it does require a close range playstyle. It's just a great budget option. Then we have the Raven Bow, which is used for an Elemental Mastery Burning playstyle. I'll have a dedicated weapon comparisons video showcasing nearly all of these bow options with my artifact setup later. Now, let's actually get into artifact setups. As primarily a charge shot user with Elemental Mastery Synergy, Tignari's setups will be nearly identical to Ganyu's. 4-piece Wanderer's Troop will likely provide the most universal benefits for Tignari without requiring new resin usage. 80 Elemental Mastery from the 2-piece and 35% charge shot damage provides his strongest form of DPS a buff. 4-piece Gilded Dreams. This is one of the two new sets released with Sumeru. While it can grant up to 230 Elemental Mastery, or 80 Elemental Mastery and 42% attack, or anything in between, it is a new set and will require a fresh farming experience to obtain. At full value, it's pretty close to Wanderer's Troop in terms of stats and more universal than just charge shot damage. However, it loses more value the more team buffs provide these stats. Attack percent is pretty prevalent for teammates to provide and artifact sets, and Elemental Mastery is increasingly easy to obtain with Dendro Resonance and Weapon Passives. I primarily stick with Wanderer's Troop for a less stressful experience. Now, 
You may ask, what about 4-piece Deepwood? Isn't that pretty strong on Tignari for the Dendro Resistance Shred? Well, thankfully, someone else on his team can use it. 4-piece Deepwood Dendro Res Shred can be used on someone who isn't Dendro, which will leave Tignari with a more offensive set and he can reap both the benefits. Okay, how about 2-piece options then? Frankly, also pretty good considering the stat pool is more universal than Wanderer's 4-piece. Options include Deepwood for the 15 Dendro, Wanderer for 80 Elemental Mastery, and any attack percent set which we have 4 of, shown on the screen. These are more resin efficient, potentially better substat quality, so consider these if 4-piece Wanderers isn't your best set. Alright, how about main stat choices then? I found that Tegnari is pretty standard DPS build with attack and elemental mastery being the usual swapping points depending on the weapon. Here's a simplification of current choices with more in-depth details in the later guide. We have Signature Hunter's Path. So for this, I'd go Elemental Mastery Timepiece, Dendro over EM over Attack Goblet, and then Crit Damage Mask. The Hunter's Path will convert the Elemental Mastery to a flat damage ammo, which overrides the need for that much attack percent. For attack percent weapons, a standard Elemental Mastery over an Attack Timepiece, Dendro Goblet, and a Crit Raker Damage Mask. For crit or elemental mastery weapons, attack timepiece over elemental mastery timepiece, dendro goblet, and crit raker damage. Charge shot slash burst damage weapons slash all damage percent weapons, attack over elemental mastery for the timepiece, and then dendro over attack timepiece, and then crit rate crit damage mask. So for the most part, as you guys can see, you can't really build him poorly as long as the main stats follow attack elemental mastery for timepiece, dendro for goblet, and a crit mask. With Sumeru being fresh though, a Dendro Goblet might be not that achievable in the early phases, so an Attack or Elemental Mastery Goblet is perfectly fine in the meantime. I would switch to a Dendro Goblet with at least 20 crit value as soon as possible. Alright, time for his gameplay showcase. He'll be running his signature Hunter's Path with a 4-piece Wanderer's Troop and Attack, Elemental Mastery, and Crit Damage main stat pieces. Keep in mind that an optimal build running Hunter's Path would look more like Elemental Mastery, a Dendro, and Crit Damage, but I currently don't have a Dendro Goblet to showcase. Also, I don't have 4-piece Deepwood on his teammates, so he's not also getting the free Dendro Resistance Shred. I'm basically handicapping him at this point, though not intentionally. His stat distribution is acceptable with these pieces. About 115% attack, 83 crit, 170 crit damage, 120% recharge, and 416 elemental mastery. With talents at 616, the damage you'll be seeing is an average Tignari. Here's what his raw, unbuffed damage looks like with my preferred playstyle. Elemental skill into elemental burst to refund the orbs and then three quick charge shots. With my level recharge, 120%, and no party members, it'll take two elemental skill rotations for his burst to come back up. With a second Dendro, like Kole, maybe Double Electro, or a Favonius user, his 40 energy cost burst will be pretty easy to maintain every 12 seconds. Imagine his burst uptime similar to Zhongli's burst in an average team. They are both 40 energy cost burst gamers. I always like to elemental skill into burst when it's up to funnel those 3-4 to four dendro orbs back into his kit before I spam the 3 charge shots that his elemental skill reduces the time for. And when his burst is not up, it's just a quick E into 3 CS and then you can swap him out. So, team comps that I like him on. First impressions show the expected dendro plus electro comp to be super interactive and easy to work with. Quicken reactions for aggravate and spread, proc extremely frequently and simultaneously boosting both dendro and electro damage. In my experience, the Electro characters that have the best synergy are the ones able to proc their Electro abilities off-field relatively frequently. These include the following. Raiden Shogun, with their Elemental Skill, Coordinated Attack, and a Rotational Burst when Tignardi's rotation is finished. Fischl and Oz, not needed at Constellation 6. Fischl's Ascension 4 passive actually comes in clutch here alongside Oz's natural attacks. Her Ascension 4 procs an 80% Electro damage attack every time the active character triggers an Electro-related reaction. Now that we have Aggravate and Spread, this is very easy. Yai Miko, more preferable in strictly single target situations due to her targeting. Yai Miko's totems are independent electro strikes that easily supply aggravate spread to buff her damage and Tignari's. Cookie Shinobu, with the only caveat of being within the range of her electro ring, Cookie can provide 100% uptime of tenacity buff, healing, and her electro application for Tignari. Since she's more supportive, teams with Cookie will likely be either double dendro or a double electro. Then we get to characters that didn't have the best impression for me personally, Lisa and Beto. So for Lisa, unless you run extremely high energy recharge, Lisa, I find the Lisa's burst difficult to maintain uptime beyond the first rotation. It's an 80 cost burst and she doesn't easily generate orbs herself without her elemental skill, which you need to hold for maximum value. Beto, 
So for Beidou, I feel like it's Beidou that doesn't get the full value with Tignari, since he can only proc her burst once per main wreath arrow and not the cluster blooms. And since her burst doesn't proc on Tignari's burst, she only gets 3 procs for his entire rotation unless you always want to lead in normal attacks. That's not high at all. I guess you could do the normal attack thing, but honestly feels wasted for Beidou's potential. I'd stick to the 4 previous characters that we mentioned. Alright, now Burning Comp. Man, this stuff is fun. So burning is quite interesting. You only need one proc of pyro, and then as long as you keep feeling that fire with dendro, it just never stops. Bennett is great as the standalone in this comp, since he provides the attack buff to Tignari when his burst combo is available, otherwise it's just the dance between Tignari and Elemental Mastery Kole to infinitely sustain burning. I added Zhongli just for the protection, but he could definitely be something more offensive here. I personally found this comp to be absolutely mesmerizing, watching the burning ticks eat away at the HP. The damage is quite impressive and only needs elemental mastery and high base level to be able to dish out impressive DOT. Only one pyro character is also needed, as the pyro aura infinitely stays on the enemies as long as burning is active. So what do I think of Tignari? In my opinion, he's a staple single target dendro DPS. Nothing super fancy, but quite enjoyable to play and his homing missiles make his difficulty level pretty easy. Both compositions of quicken and burning seem quite viable and enable his damage to shine in different ways. Flexible weapon choices and a 4 piece wanderers user makes his build path pretty stable to get with strongbox providing wanderers pieces and a multitude of F2B craftable options available for his weapons. For now, those are my first impressions of Constellation Zero Tignari. Keep your eyes peeled for a dedicated weapon comparisons if you want to see how all of its current options compare to Hunter's Path, as well as a deeper dive complete guide later in the week. Good luck to those summoning, and I hope that all Tignari Wanters become Tignari Havers. Thanks as always for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.